Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel. And I'm absolutely delighted to be out here on location under the stars. Now, it's early morning. It's just gone over 4 a.m. I'm out here to shoot the rising Milky Way galactic core. I can see it there in the sky. It looks absolutely phenomenal here tonight. And if you look behind me, I don't know if you can see that, right down low on the horizon, there is Orion. Now, Orion, here in the Southern Hemisphere, it's always a sure thing that if Orion is setting down there in the west, the galactic core is always rising there in the east, and sure enough, there it is. Now, I've actually been out here for a fair while already, probably about an hour and a half, um, shooting a few bits and pieces because I wanted to set up a time lapse, which I did when I first arrived here. Now, I'm just in this uh, pretty secluded location. It's probably about a Bortle 3 sky as far as darkness goes, uh, which is great. There's an old disused railway track over here, which I'm making use of shooting some compositions. There's also a gorgeous silo complex down just down the railway tracks there. Now, I've shot there a few times in the past, and I thought, well, I'll come back here. I haven't been out here for a while. Facing towards the east where the Milky Way galactic core is, uh, it's, it's pretty dark down that way, a bit of a glow on the horizon, but just, just a little bit, so it's good. So look, I'm, I'm pretty tired and you know, true to form for me, my next job is to actually get a cuppa and have something to eat. I'm starving. Now who in their right mind at four o'clock in the morning is scoffing away on biscuits and tea? But well, that's me, you guys know me. So I'm gonna get the tracker out in a minute. But I'll put that down right now. I'm, I've got a few new bits and pieces I've been playing around with. Now, you guys probably haven't seen me uh, out on location much recently. And that's uh, not to say that I haven't been, because I have. I've been out shooting a fair bit during our Australian summer here. And a lot of it has been trying out a few new bits and pieces. So I'll talk to you about that in a minute. But first things first, let's get that cuppa. These early morning starts, I tell you what, they knock you around a little bit, lack of sleep. I often ask myself, is it worth it? Is it worth it to get out of bed, to come out here and be a bit sleep deprived the next day, maybe two days? Of course it is, but I have to take it easy sometimes. Now this is the first time that I've been out for 20 23. It's right at the end of January, start of February. So the Milky Way galactic core is rising up there. It looks, I'm looking at it now, it is absolutely gorgeous. It looks fantastic. And you know, it is definitely worth it. But as I said, I've got to pace myself. So that's why the cuppa sit here and relax. You know, the other thing I love about this is just doing that, watching the night sky seeing the landscape, there's a few trucks going along the road over there, but you know, I enjoy every part of the experience and that's exactly what it is. It is an experience and I'm not gonna miss it. And the other thing I'm not gonna miss out on is dunking a biscuit in the middle of the night. <laughs> Everyone else is asleep here, I am out here having a cup of tea and dunking biscuits. Okay, so this just screws on the thread. This is something I've made up, uh, which works really well. It's got a plastic thread, and that is attached onto there. Now I can put my tracker base 
on top of that because I know the tripod is now level, which I think is pretty important. And from there, I can start doing my steps to get the polar alignment happening. So once again, I'm using my Skylabs uh, mount here to do my polar alignment. So I'm gonna just stick that in there like so. Screw that down. Now I'm gonna get my phone app, but the first thing I'm going to do with my phone is calibrate the compass. And to do that, I'll just turn the phone on. Now I'll get out here in the open here somewhere and just go a great big figure eight, just like that. So it doesn't matter what angle it's on, I'm just going around and around and around with the figure eight with my phone. And that calibrates the compass. And now I'm gonna get my um, app up, which is Sky Safari 6 Plus. Now you've seen me do this before, but I just go into the compass, put it into its live view, and then I just adjust the mount, the altitude and the latitude, etc., to get it where I think it needs to be. And it is as simple as that. That's taken me all of about two minutes to set that up. So it's really, it's a really good, easy, simple process. But what I will do is do a couple of test shots just to make sure that my polar alignment works out because obviously when you're using a phone app, nothing is ever perfect. But so far my testing has been pretty accurate. So let's set it up. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up the camera. Now I'll show you in a minute, but I'm using a Skywatcher Star Adventurer Mini. This is a new one that I haven't had for very long. Um, and it's been fantastic so far. I'll explain why I got that in a minute. I'm just gonna set up the power supply. I'm using a USB power bank here to power this baby. So what I'm gonna do is give it a test shot. I've got a 50 millimeter lens attached to my camera here at the moment. With a 50 millimeter lens, if I can get that to be reasonably accurately aligned, then I've got no problem. I'm gonna be shooting mainly with a 20 mil tonight. So that's my methodology. So I'm just gonna focus this onto the stars up there and we shall go from there. Now I am a little bit concerned about that lens fogging up. So uh, I'm just looking for a lens warmer. I've got a few in the bag here. Uh, it's, it's pretty cold. Well, Australian summer cold is about 10 degrees Celsius at night. So uh, I've just got this lens warmer here. I'm gonna put on that lens before I go too much further. So you can see here, I've got this little stone bag under the tripod which is holding my power pack, uh, two power packs actually, one for the lens warmer and one for the Star Adventurer Mini. And you can see that there, and that works really well. So I haven't been using it with batteries very often. It does take two AA batteries, but uh, I probably prefer to run it with this power bank. You can see the lens warmer there on the camera i'm using my nikon z6a which is the hydrogen alpha modified z6 i've got the 20 millimeter f 1.8 nikon lens you can see there shooting and that's working really really well
Well, we've been shooting here for quite a while and the time gets away. It's really difficult to make these videos and actually shoot uh, nightscape images at the same time, especially when you're mucking around with trackers and I've been shooting down the railway tracks. Uh, look, it's been a fantastic morning. And just on this Star Adventurer Mini, now, this was very kindly sourced to me by Will Godwood, who is a fantastic nightscape photographer, and he has ties with Skywatcher Australia. He's helped me out before with, with stuff and gear and helped me with warranty issues and things like that. But Will, thank you so much. Uh, love this little machine. Now, I just want to talk just a little bit about my reason for having a look at the Star Adventurer Mini. You know, the world is full of people getting complex tracking devices at the moment. They're all over the place but, uh, and, and people are lapping this stuff up. But I tell you what, I'm going the opposite direction. I want simplicity. I want lightweight. I want simple. I want stuff that just you can throw in the bag, you put it on your tripod and it just works every time. Uh, now I know this is just a simple tracker and I don't want to put great big uh, heavy payloads on it. That's not my go at all. I shot tonight with a 20 mil lens and a 50 millimeter lens. And that 50 millimeter lens, the Nikon 50 mil f1.8 on this tracker is an absolutely killer combination. I've got this amazing image of the silo down there shot along the railway tracks with the core above it and it looks absolutely beautiful. But my go-to lens for most of my shots tonight was the 20 millimeter. And uh, so by using those fairly wide angle lenses on a tracker, the polar alignment doesn't have to be perfect. Now you've seen my method of polar aligning. I've been doing this for the last three months. I've been practicing, working on doing a simple polar alignment uh, just by using a, a compass, phone app, and it only takes a couple of minutes to line up. And I'm out here tonight, I've done some test shots and it worked beautifully. Uh, so the Star Adventurer Mini, I've got it here operating on uh, USB power. As I said before, it does take AA batteries, so you can run it that way too if you want to. Now, a lot of people complain about the Mini being app controlled. Now, one thing I can tell you, yes, it is controlled by the Skywatcher SAM app, as they call it. But you know what? I used it once. All I did was set it up, make sure it was traveling in the Southern Hemisphere uh, direction, and I just set it to continuously run, which you can do quite easily. And now, all I have to do is plug power in and turn the on switch, and it is running, just like any other tracker. So I don't need to worry about the app. I haven't even taken it out. I haven't got the app running since the first day I owned the machine. So it's been fantastic. Small, lightweight, easy to fit in the camera bag. Uh, I've got the Alan Wallace V-mount bracket here on the top with a ball head. Uh, so I've got a level surface. Now, if I want to do panos or something like that, then it's a lot easier when you've got a level surface here rather than just put the ball head straight on to the, the, the mount of the, the, the Mini here. Uh, but apart from that, that's going really well. Sturdy tripod, really important, uh, as we all know. And uh, look at that glow in the background. It's, it's, it's af well after five o'clock in the morning. So here in Australia at, at five o'clock in the morning in summer, you're starting to get the, the glow happening from the dawn approaching. So uh, that's pretty good. But I've got to go and check that time lapse. So I shot a time lapse down there earlier. It's finished by now. So I'm gonna have to pack up all my gear here trot off down there and uh, hopefully that one worked. So let's get going. Okay, so here we are. This is my time-lapse camera. You can see I've got the tripod legs really widely spread here just to give it good stability and I've got my Nikon Z6 here. Now I'm actually using this with a Sony 20 millimeter f1.8 lens on a Megadap ETZ21 adapter. I've been playing around with this for a while now and I wanted to check 
to make sure gee, everything's fogged up. Thankfully, I put a lens warmer on. You can see the silos and the uh, shed, etc., there in the background. Uh, and so this looks like it's been working quite well. I just had a quick preview of it. What a beautiful angle this is. You can see that morning light coming up behind the silo down there. So, uh, well, this is exciting. So yeah, as I said, I've been using that Sony lens on the Nikon camera for the past few weeks. And I'll do more of a video just about that on its own. But I wanted to test it out with time-lapse because it's one of the things that I might find myself using the adapter for. Okay, so here it is here. Now I had this set to f2.2, 13 second shutter speeds at ISO 4000. Uh, and I set it to run for 600 images. And you can see what it looks like there. Well, you'll see it better in a minute, but that is running through beautifully. I can't see any problems at all with that. So by using that Sony lens on this camera, it gives me more options to be able to use all of my lens collections. So there you go. You can see the Megadap adapter. It is really thin. In fact, you wouldn't even know it was on there, to be honest. So that's a Sony 20 millimeter F1.8 lens. Nikon Z6 Mark II camera doing time lapse. I have to admit that one of the things I, I guess we all do as photographers enjoy is having a look after we've taken these images on the back screen of the camera. I mean, I know there's an awful lot of work to do in the post-processing of these images. There always is with, with Milky Way photography, but you know, I, I just love it. It's, it's a thrill. And it's one of those things that, you know, after the, after the end of a long night, which it has been, uh, I'm pretty tired right now. You know, just seeing the results on the camera screen is a, is a buzz. And, um, you know, everything worked. I mean, that, that's the main thing. It, it was a good successful night at this stage. And, you know, my tripod here, just packing everything up. You can see I've got my uh, little reflective stickers all over the tripod. Because uh, you, you, you're going to laugh, I know. But sometimes I'm out there thinking, where on earth is that tripod? And, and I'm thinking, well, well, there's a little glow over there. That's that sticker I put on the thing because I don't want, when I've got a camera running, I don't want my, um, it to be using head torches and things like that because I, I might wreck the, especially time-lapse. So uh, these things are a really good idea. So I've been using that. And, um, oh, I'm starting to rattle on. Look, thanks so much for joining me again today. This is my first adventure chasing the Galactic Core for 2023, but I can tell you now, it's not going to be my last. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and enjoyed the images that I've been able to shoot on this trip. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, have a absolutely fantastic week. I'll see you later.